Hello everyone, how are you doing today? You are all welcome to my channel, Apostle Paul Taiwo YouTube channel, to my recent subscribers I want to say a very big thank you, and to those that have been here all along, God bless you. And if this is your first time on this channel, I want to say a very big welcome and thank you for tuning into my video today. Kindly endeavor to click the subscription button and also the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I dropped a new video or come up for prayers. This video you are about to listen to I believe will bless your heart, and help you to come into repentance, and also strengthen your bond with God and with His Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Endeavor to like this video, share it to all your friends, contacts and loved ones, God bless you. This testimony is the 11th part in a series of 13 as narrated by Brother Jonas of Congo. Let's continue to follow his testimony with an open mind as we share them with you. And after that, I became Shiva, the God of Destruction. I was given 406 demons. Among them, there was an angel named Nemital. He is among the angels that were chased away from heaven with Lucifer. I was then working for the devil. As a human, I was living in this world two days a week. But the other days, I was living with the devil. In addition to the skeleton that I had in my body, I was given a second one and the devil taught me how to fight churches, how to make churches sink into spiritual sleep or apostasy, how to count the weeks of Daniel and how to prepare the return of Jesus. The Return of Jesus Here I would like to digress for a moment, the Lord Jesus is coming soon. We are in a period called, the Time of Grace. The death of the Lord Jesus occurred at the end of the 69th week of Daniel. When the 69th week comes to an end, we go directly into the 70th week. But instead of going into this week, there is a mystery that the devil does not know. That mystery is a temporary halt. In this weekly chronology of Daniel, there is a temporary halt. Why this temporary halt? This aims at allowing all the nations that do not know the good news to know it. It is this exact time, the time of grace. And the Bible says, the end will come when the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world. But today, when you look carefully, even the nations that were hostile to the gospel, accept Jesus and the gospel is preached in the whole world. When you go to India, you find Indian Christians. If you go even in Iraq, you will find Iraqi Christians, and even in Japan, there are Christians. This is proof that the gospel has already reached all the nations and that we are now at the end of the time of grace. Besides, we are already seeing the signs that the Lord Jesus gave, and even the two main protagonists of the eschatology are already there. We have the pagan Roman Empire and the Levitical worship, the Levitical priesthood, because Jesus was accused by the Jews, but killed by the Romans. For us to go into the 70th week, these two protagonists had to reappear. Now the Roman Empire is already there with what is called the European Union, EU. There is a single currency called Euro. There is an army, a constitution, one is even looking for the president of the EU. And when you see the Israeli-Palestinians war today, they fight over the Gaza Strip to demolish the mosque in order to rebuild the Temple of Jerusalem. However, the Antichrist will go to set himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself God. This Antichrist is Captain Samanelli. While I was still with the devil, he had even given us the characteristics of his churches. Here in Congo, there are 69 churches of the devil. All the churches that accept ecumenism are already in the hands of Satan. You should never attend ecumenical services because it is satanic. After that, I continued to serve the devil. The devil had given me the authorization to speak directly to him without passing through intermediaries. And he had also given me the authorization to take part in all the meetings of the great Satanists of the whole world at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. I was doing all that and I became the representative of the third degree in the mystery of the air. However, when I returned, I was no longer a normal man, I was 50% human and 50% demon. And being in this world, I was saying to myself, I will die on January 6, 2006, but when I will die, one will bury me and even forget me. So to make sure that I would not be forgotten, before I die, I must have a child. But in me, there was already a snake in my left arm, and its mission was to kill any woman or girl who could sleep with me because I was married in the world of darkness. Women WHO sleep with priests. 
The priest who initiated me into the holy magic gave me a red handkerchief and told me, if you sleep with a woman, with this handkerchief on you, she will not die, but in all her life, she will never get married. Look at those women or girls who go out with priests, they never get married. Continue with sexual immoralities. One day you will come across a Satanist who has a handkerchief, and he will condemn you to celibacy. But if you come back to Jesus, and confess and give up sexual immoralities, Jesus is able to turn your curses into blessings. So I found a girl. I was going out with her, and every time, I had that handkerchief. That girl knew me, she knew my spiritual state, she knew that I was a Satanist. In Likasi, what I was doing in Satanism was not a secret. My family knew it, my brothers and sisters knew it, my friends and even the girl in question knew it. But she was attracted by my money. It is sad. I took a statue of Marie Margu and gave it to her. I told her, whenever you want to sleep, you have to put it under your pillow and that was what happened. Without knowing it, she was already in the hands of Lucifer. So I was going out with her, till the day she came to see me and told me that she was pregnant. I was very happy. I had said to myself, now there is a woman who is pregnant with my child when I die, I will be remembered thanks to the child who will be born. And then, I gave her money and she left. I was in Likasi, and I went to Kakanga to look for ore. I had spent two weeks in Kakanga and my right hand began to rot. My right hand was completely rotten. After that, I left Kakanga and returned to Likasi. I went to all health centers, clinics, hospitals, etc. Despite the fact that I had been administered antibiotics, the situation of my hand was only getting worse. Everyone saw my hand that was rotting and there was a discharge. That liquid was like a mixture of water and the powder found in batteries. So since I had looked for healing in vain, I took the decision to invoke demons. One night I went to the playground of the secular school. When I got there, I uttered incantations and was answered. I was told, it is your wife Helene, who is responsible for your hand that is rotting. She is angry with you because you made a girl pregnant in the human's world. If you want your hand to be healed, you have to accept that this girl and the baby that she carries, die. It is only after that, that your hand can be healed, otherwise, it will be amputated. And I had to give an answer immediately. And suddenly, I said, if my hand has to be amputated, let it be so, but this girl will remain alive. The brother briefly describes what had happened when he was invited to the world of the cemetery. He continued and said, we must not have pity on the devil or the sorcerers, because they too when they steal our blessings, they do not feel sorry for us. First, I was supposed to die in 2006, and later, the date was changed to January 6, 2005. Beloved, I am still alive after the deadline that was imposed on me. The devil is a liar, he is the father of lies. If the devil threatens you, if sorcerers threaten you, you must resist them in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you fall into the trap of giving in to the sorcerer's threats, they will have an effect on you, but if you resist them in the name of Jesus, they will flee from you. That is the principle. And after that, I came back. In 2002, that girl gave birth to a baby girl, her name is Letitia and she lives in Likasi. While I was with that girl, I continued to serve the devil and I knew that I will die in 2005. And towards the end of 2002, I said to myself, in the world of darkness, I have a lot of money and when I die, the future of my daughter will not be insured. Our God gives everyone the opportunity to repent, and even sorcerers. The devil was not aware of all these ideas, Satan did not know what was going through my thoughts. And I said to myself, you have to make a transfer of your money so that, after your death, your daughter's future will be guaranteed. So I went to submit my request to the devil. And he told me, it does not matter, for that, you will give me just two people, and those two people will make your transfer. For me who was used to kill many people, sacrificing two people would only be a breeze. He then told me, you have to sign with your blood. And I signed. At the end of 2002, the devil said to me, I need these two people for the transfer. But those two people are not the one that you will kill by throwing money along the way, or by causing accidents. 
the two people that I am asking for, should be taken from your family, not your extended family, but your nuclear family. And he gave me a deadline and told me, the end is February 5th, 2003. If you do not realize it, within this period, then you will be the one who will die. And when you die, you will no longer come to be by my side. You will go to the Hades, in the astral world. Do you see how the devil changes? Despite what I had done for him, he, who had asked me to call him daddy. You see that kind of dad? A dad who is not serious. Now I had to choose between my siblings and my parents, two people. I did not know who to sacrifice, I was afraid, I was in the service of Satan. On the one hand, I was afraid of him, and on the other hand, I did not want to sacrifice the members of my family. Then in me, there was that fight. And as I knew what the devil was, I was obliged to submit myself to him, and I continued to serve him. One day, in a big meeting, the devil gave us many strategies to entrap true Christians, to win souls for the astral world. And at the end, he gave to each Satanist an assignment. My assignment was to go and kill 10 people, besides the two people he had requested in my nuclear family. And we went and I caused a traffic accident, and there were 13 dead. After that, we went to another meeting. And in that meeting, each Satanist had to give the report of his assignment. And the devil was sitting on his throne, and all of us were there. We were many, and we had to give the report in turn. The first went forward, gave his report and returned to his place. I was the ninth person. I also went and gave my report. I said that the assignment that had been entrusted to me, was to kill 10 people and I had killed 13. And for that, I was cheered. Thus, I returned to my place. The 10th person also went forward. The 15th person, a Satanist from Togo, went forward. He began by saying this, I failed in the assignment that had been entrusted to me. Then, the devil was furious. He got up, started to hurl insults at the Satanist, he tried to know the reason for this failure. Then he sat again on his throne. The man in question began to speak. His assignment was to kill a pastor in Togo. And he arrived at the pastor's house, penetrated into the roof. He waited for the night when the pastor would go to bed, to kill him. Before going to bed, the pastor knelt and began to pray. And this man said, he was praying and when he was praying, I felt nothing. I was still in the roof, I was waiting for the end of the prayer to act. But at the end of his prayer, the pastor said, it is in the name of Jesus. He did not even say, Christ. All of us who were in the room were thrown to the floor. We were all on the floor. Beloved, while we were on the floor, I looked at the throne of Lucifer, he also, was not on his throne, he was on the floor, like all of us. He who was telling us that he was above all things, he had told us that his power was at the top and on that day, he too, like all of us, fell from his throne and was on the floor. The devil on the ground, O oh my beloved. The Bible says, before the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Even the devil should bow his knees before the King of Kings. Because Jesus the King of Kings was given the name that is above every name, and before that name, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. I saw the devil on the floor. I saw with my own eyes Lucifer on the floor. And after that he got up and started to hurl insults at the man, the one who had mentioned that name, he was taken away and was killed. A free advice, if you are a sorcerer, and it happens that one sends you on a mission to kill a Christian, if you fail, know that it is the grace of God. If you fail, do not go back to your camp to give the report, you will be killed. If you fail, go quickly to the church and confess what you have done, they will pray for you and you will be delivered like me. And as soon as the devil got up, he told us, do not worry about this incident, soon I am going to reign in this world, I will give you important positions. Know that I will dethrone that feeble from his throne, that feeble, who is called I do not know what, I am going to dethrone him. And when he said that, we acclaimed him, yet it was not long ago that we were all on the floor. I had a deadline that was imposed on me. And when I was back in Likasi, I said to myself, when we were there, the name was just mentioned, he was not there physically, one just mentioned his name and all of us were thrown on the ground. Thus, this one who is imposing this deadline on me, 
there is certainly someone who is above him. So what am I going to do? As he has imposed this deadline on me, I will go where that name is mentioned. I will go there and the deadline imposed on me will be cancelled, because he is not the most powerful. And that is how I started to go to churches to seek deliverance because I recognized that the master I was serving was inferior to another master who is Jesus Christ. The devil had imposed a deadline on me, and I had to die according to his deadline. So I went to church. I found deliverance, the deadline that the devil had imposed on me was cancelled. I did not die in 2005. And today, I am still alive. My deliverance took a year, from February 3, 2003 until February 3, 2004, at the hospital. I went to 23 churches. My family rejected me. In the beginning, I told you, you should take the risk of telling the truth. I told the truth in my family, and because of that, I was chased away. I was abandoned, but Jesus did not abandon me. It was not easy for the devil to let me go. With all the secrets I knew, with all the training I received from him, he trained me to fight Christians, to destroy, to sabotage the work of God. He gave me a lot of strategies and techniques. When I was trying to give my life to the Lord Jesus, the devil, knowing very well that if I am delivered and begin to reveal his secrets, many children of God will be strengthened and many people will be delivered, fought me seriously. It is very easy to make a pact with the devil, but very difficult to separate from him. I would like to emphasize on a point. If you need the intervention of the Lord Jesus, you should take the risk of telling the truth. If you tell the truth, you can be hated by everyone, your family might reject you, your friends might abandon you, but Jesus will not abandon you. Because of the truth that you are going to tell, Jesus will never abandon you because he himself is the truth. He is the faithful friend. When you are in distress, ask for the help of God. And here I also draw the attention of those who are still serving the devil in witchcraft and who are doing wicked things in the church. Be careful, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows, sooner or later. And when you do those things, do not think that God does not see you. He wants to let you seize the opportunity to change. But if you persist in doing those things, know that one day, when God will say, enough is enough, he will strike you. Let us read the word of God in Psalm 60:12, Galatians 6:7, and Isaiah 66:16. Psalm 60:12 give us aid against the enemy, for the help of man is worthless. Galatians 6:7 do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Isaiah 66:16 for with fire and with his sword the Lord will execute judgment upon all men, and many will be those slain by the Lord. When I came back from that famous meeting where the devil fell on the ground with us when the name of Jesus was mentioned, I decided to go where one mentions that name, so that men of God would pray for me by mentioning that name, and by doing so, the demons who are disturbing me would run away. One day I met a friend, Brother Thierry, who led me to his pastor, it was in Likasi. It was at night and there was a night vigil. We arrived there at 9.30 pm, there were the pastor and the intercessors, they were in large numbers. I was taken to the pastor, and then I told him about my past. When I finished, he told me, it is okay, we will take care of your case, but for the moment, you are going to sit in that corner, and he gave me a chair and I sat down and the prayer began. At midnight, the pastor called me and told me, stand there. The bench that was there was removed to create space, and I was asked to stay in the middle. The intercessors formed a circle around me and began to pray. They prayed a lot and mentioned the name of Jesus, but I felt nothing. They prayed so much from midnight until 2 o'clock in the morning, I was there, I was looking at them and I was feeling nothing. There was no effect on me despite the name of Jesus that those people were mentioning. Beloved, beware. When this name is mentioned by a person who leads a sinful life, there is no effect, but if that name is mentioned by a person who walks in the fear of God, there will automatically be effects. Those people prayed until they got tired. The pastor went to stay in front of the door, and the intercessors went on praying. As they did not see any change on me, they started to give me punches in the name of Jesus. They were giving me punches in the name of Jesus, but while they were punching me, I felt as if they were scratching me. And I opened my mystical eyes, I looked at the intercessors who surrounded me, 
they were all naked, without clothes. If you do not walk in the fear of God, if you do not lead a life of sanctification, do not venture into chasing out demons, otherwise, you will bring shame to the name of Jesus. When those people were hitting me, I was angry and I said to myself, the fact of coming here and revealing all my secrets, is a betrayal towards the devil. So, since nothing occurred, when I get home, he will seriously hit me. But before he hit me, I should at first start by hitting these people. So I started to punch them. It was not even serious punches. I was only pushing those people and they were falling on benches, and benches were breaking. After that, I left the church. When I got home, the evil spirits were already waiting for me. And there, they beat me up seriously. They struck me and I was bleeding profusely. My nose, my mouth, and even my ears were bleeding. And the next morning, I said to myself, I will look for other servants of God again despite the fact that they hit me. I went to see another servant of God. You know beloved, if you need to be delivered, you have to be the first to show the willingness to be delivered. No one has to force you. They struck me at night, but the next day, I went to another pastor again. There was a brother who led me to Sankuru's Avenue. When I arrived there, there was a pastor who had a name to which one added fire. So when I entered, it was on Wednesday. This church had a canvas sheet as the roof, mats as the wall. There were many people, I came in, saw the pastor, talked to him, and he said to me, it is okay, there is no problem. Go and take a seat in the back. I went there and I sat down. He began to preach. After the preaching, he then had to lead the prayer. He asked everyone to stand up. When everyone was standing, the pastor started praying. He gave a prayer topic and the faithful were immersed in prayer, and he was walking around. He arrived at the back where I was, stood in front of me and said, Brother, I just saw a white man behind you. I said, Oh, so there is a white man behind me? Since you are the one who saw that white man, you can remove him from there, you can take him out. Beloved, there are pranksters, especially those who work for their pockets and their stomachs, there are jokers and they are too many. They are the ones who make even sorcerers become unbelievers. A sorcerer who enters the church and succeeds in bewitching even the pastors, how can he give his life to the Lord Jesus? If you are not called by the Lord Jesus, you would better stay aside like any other and receive teachings, and at the right time, if you were really called by the Lord, he will also equip you. When our God gives vision, he also gives provision. Then he was there, and suddenly he started speaking in tongues. When I was looking at him, I was rather seeing a man without clothes. And he tried to hold me. I just made a gesture with my hand, I just touched him without pushing him, and he was hurled and went to fall on the faithful. And when he fell on his faithful, the prayer came to an end, and the intercessors began to move the seats. There was an empty space, and those people were continuing to pray while the pastor was on the ground. They also committed the same mistake, they started punching me in the name of Jesus. And when I started to push them, they jumped and went out with the mats, and in the end, when I left that place, there was only the roof left. All the mats were gone. Grace be with you all who have Jesus Christ as Master and Savior, Amen. Bye for now. Hello everyone thank you for watching our video for today, I trust it blesses your heart. Endeavor to like this video and share it to your loved ones, I pray the grace of the living God will continue to rest upon you and upon everything that pertains to you in the name of Jesus, Amen. If you have any question or comments kindly drop them in the comment section, God bless you. See you in our next video and have a lovely day, bye for now.